What is good, champions of Warframe? The top G you builds is here with the Incarnon Ceramic Dagger. But this weapon is a bit complicated and you need to learn and understand because you can build this weapon in different ways. You can build them for light, you can build them for heavy, and you can build them for statistic and very deadly. And I will explain to you everything. That's why we're going to be playing around with evolutions, especially for this weapon. But before going there, you need to understand the basics and the science behind this uh, weapon. All right. This weapon deals a primary puncture damage, stand slot polarity matching stinging thorn and pointed wind. Now you say why we talk about this, I will tell you in a second. Grants 10% movement speed when held, means when you hold the weapon you're gonna have 10% movement speed in top of the incarnate that you're gonna have it as passive already, don't worry about that uh, other stuff. You get it from the Nightwave uh, offering, that's how you get uh, this weapon, and this is how what you need to craft it, blah 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 blah. Now, this is very important. When equipped without stance mode, a ceramic dagger adds a fourth lunging stab to its normal attack without stance mode. And now, combo with uh, uh, with propel to warframe, a good stance, a forward, which is useful, blah, 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 blah. It also has 100% chance of inflicting slash bleed proc. This effect is lost if one uses the pointed wind stance so you don't use this wind stance use the other one i'm going to show you it in a second in the build all right so when you finish the video you see ceramic dagger from the night wave all this you know you need 20 paths clump dracor to craft it blah 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 now we need to learn about only one thing now i'm not going to make this video uh, super long there is a couple of things you need to learn here okay first thing you need to learn is um first of all critical chance critical damage statue chance are the same as the base weapon direct hits can headshot and direct hits of spectral daggers so you need to know what this weapon does so let's imagine this is the dagger right when you heavy attack in the incarnate form the dagger sends two projectiles right sends pro projectile like this toothpick and, and and this like boom yeah yeah you, you get you get the idea so when you hit gonna be two projectiles going that's the spectral daggers of course i'm gonna show you everything don't worry and explosion are uh, affected by univer are uh, affected by universal base damage sources like vigorous swap hostile uh, amp arcane arachne vex armor and uh, amp now this you need to know uh, they are let's say a universal base damage so the uh, pure damage will not work like for example let's say for example uh, arcane fury as an example it will not work for this weapon not as general many Thanos will tell you oh no no that's... no 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 it works if you're gonna do light if you're gonna go light all right it works but if you're gonna go using the uh, perk of this weapon hits uh, of spectral dagger which you want to do but I'm gonna give you many options here all right so, the each explosion inflicts a pure heat, so it's guaranteed heat, and forced impact uh, a proc. Simple as that. Uh, and also, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, evolution now. Let's go about the evolution. First of all, active evolution 1, 100% melee damage, 25% sprint speed, 25% bullet jump. Now, why these weapons are very good when it comes to statistic, so we clear this. That 100% melee damage will go along with the um, statistics. Everyone enjoying it, everyone loving it, especially also with the perk for uh, always the critical chance works. They, maybe they will fix it in the future, but until then we use and enjoy this uh, perk. Moving next, the first evolution, uh, the second evolution obviously, you have the first one, the option, you have increased damage by 120, on shield break, increased damage by 80 for 8 seconds. Many Thanos would love this one. Many Thanos would love this one because everyone is shield gating for endurance runs. And if you take this one for endurance run, it's very good because everyone is shield gating. But if we take a look at the second, it's gun and blade. Increased damage by 100 on primary kill. One initial combo stacks up to 100 times. Now, increased damage by 100. Now, if you're going to use this one, that means you're going to go either for heavy attacks or you're gonna go, for example, for stat stick, one of these. But even if you go for stat stick, I would prefer you go this one. So we're gonna go for this one, for this build, but the next build, we're gonna change the perks. As I told you, this weapon uses different perks and please DE, make us um, able to change the perks from the Orbiter, much appreciated. Now moving to Evolution 3, now here you have on kill 40% chance to instantly reload primary secondary, you don't need this one. 
Now you have adept reflexes, the initial combo. You're already thinking about heavy attack. Yes, you're right. The second one, Orokin uh, uh, Reach, you have plus one range. Simple as that. So now we are discussing here the uh, light attacks. That means you're going to get close to enemies and attack them and sometimes use the perk. So, so here we're talking about the build without using the main perk which you would love about this weapon. It's going to be uh, the heavy style. Moving to evolution 4, here we have increased critical chance by 30% or critical or static chance by 30% or on first attack with primary equipped increased critical damage by multiplier by 2. This one's not good, not good. I don't like this one. It's, it's true critical damage by 2, but you don't find enough time. It's, it's really so small time. Even with the animation, you lose it. I don't like it. So here you have critical chance or static chance up to you which you choose, but I prefer that you choose critical chance because even if you choose it here for a set stick, you don't need to change. So the game of changing the perk is going to be about evolution 2 and evolution 3 now let's do the first build let's go really quick to simulacrum let's go and here we are in simulacrum i want you just to keep one thing in your mind right now is this increase damage by 120 and shield break that what we're going to be using now so you don't say hi why you're not using a primary don't worry this is getting close to enemies build this is build number one let me clear this so ten is ah, wrong. wait 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 Okay, so in Nidus, what we're going to be using, we're not going to be using the Swift Momentum. We're going to be using the... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right, let me put melee. Steel Charge. We're going to be using Steel Charge. We're going to be using Fury and Strike. But Hank, you said Fury doesn't work. Yes, but as I told you, this is build one getting close to enemies uh, style. Okay, now moving to Ceramic Dagger build. We're going to be using Stinging uh, Thorn, Condition Overload, more stats, more damage, uh, Sacrificial Steel... Uh, Critical chance, whipping versus static chance per combo multiplier, and blood rush for critical chance, stacks with combo multiplier, gladiator might, organ shatter, prime silver strike, vicious frost, and there you go. Okay, now we're gonna be using nanomon to keep the uh, our combo multiplier combo uh, multiplier so it doesn't deplete it goes uh, away slowly and here is our panzer profile that works for us bro viral i'm gonna leave you the link up there on how to get this pet now when you use running this pet of course you can switch to corrosive you can switch to gas you can play around all you have to do is change the vicious frost to whatever element that you want electricity goes boom boom and all that if you want to run for example uh faction mode you can switch gladiator might or you can switch weeping wound as you're running a uh, blood rush some tenants would say, oh, you're not running the full gladiator. Don't worry. Don't listen to these tenants. They, they know. They, they speak of only what they know. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, uh, we're using neither so we don't boost the enemy. The, the, we don't boost the weapon in any way. Means what you're seeing is what you're getting. Activating the incarnate form. And look at it. The weapon is very strong, very powerful. And you really, 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 really would love to try this weapon let me summon them one more time to try again them with 12 combo multiplier together getting around look at this the enemy is dying i mean i'm not saying you're, you're like one shotting them maybe double two shotting them let me summon them third time and without getting them uh, around i know this video is kind of long i totally understand but that's what it is. This weapon needs this to happen uh, because this weapon have a different thing, different styles, different... I, I couldn't make the video any faster without explaining you everything because not everybody uh, makes videos uh, explaining the science behind every uh, weapon, okay? So that's the build number one. Now, we're gonna move now to Gavalero once more and we're gonna change our perks and we move to build number two. Let's go. And here we are on Gavalero. Now we're gonna go heavy attack build style. So the second, uh, the second uh, evolution. We're not gonna keep on damage 120 uh, on shield break on increase damage. We're gonna go for increase damage by 100 on primary kill. One initial combo stacks up to 100. 100 is gonna be approximately around six, four combo multipliers. That's gonna be uh, around that. You want that to be active because the 100 stacks they don't deplete. Well, like you're gonna consume them, but they come back. The stacks will be always there unless uh, you die or you get bugged out. Now moving to the second one, uh, third evolution. We don't need range here. We need 
20 initial extra combo so we have uh, 100 here stacks uh, plus one initial combo and stacks to 100 here we have 20 initial uh, combos okay we're gonna leave this one the same it is and now let's go where let's go to simulacrum boom and here we are in simulacrum first thing we want to do as we go for heavy we're gonna be removing the steel charge from here and we're gonna be putting uh, the aura of uh, the swift momentum for wind up and now you can remove a uh, fury and you put the uh, avenger here or you put uh, arachne okay you can put arachne but i don't like you to play the style of uh wall latching and all that kind of uh thing because no don't, don't, don't and plus it's damaged go for critical chance so don't uh, tease the bugs and think it will break. Okay, now moving to heavy baby. Stinging Thorn, Condition Overload, Sacrificial Steel, Primed Smite, Corrupted. Now we're using Faction Mode here because we... Now, now this what you're gonna see now is the way this weapon intended to play. This is the way this, this weapon designed and the fun way to play. This is the Incarnon style, the Incarnon desire, the Incarnon whatever you can name it. This is how you play this weapon, okay? This is the official build. Okay, Blood Rush, Amalgam Organ Shatter, Critical Damage, Heavy Wind Up Speed, Gladiator Might for Critical Damage and Enhanced Critical Chance, Primary Fever Strike, Vicious Frost, of course you can switch it wherever you want the Frost for different things, of course you can switch it for a Riven as well. Now you're gonna be running 128 Critical Chance, if you think that's enough you can switch Blood Rush with Weeping Wound, of course you can put Corrupted Charge for more uh, combo in instead of blood uh, rush no problemo at all okay now we're gonna be using another one the same thing but there is something i need you to understand and know right now now we're gonna be using uh not this we're gonna be using this one increase damage by 100 on primary kill plus one initial combo stacks up to 100 time so that means what we're going to do that means we need to stack up 100 uh, from the buff so primary kills i want to show you just one second boom 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 i want you to pay attention to my buffs up there we have one you see that gun and blade okay here here i'm gonna just kill these enemies really quick and you're gonna start seeing the gun and blade okay then we go three so let me collect 100 and come back to you so this video doesn't be longer than it tend to let's go and here we are with 100 combo multiplier as you can see we already have seven so i'm just going to collect these enemies really quick and then activate the incarnal form by doing a heavy attack and check this out as you can see even i'm casting my uh heavy attacks consuming the combo i have seven already in there and it's gonna keep coming back look at that boom if you just give it one second it's gonna give you all the seven combo multipliers back once more check this out Okay, so we have seven again. Boom. Boom. So, you see the projectiles? Now, one does a lot of damage the way I noticed, and the other one is kind of weak a bit. I don't know what's wrong with it, but uh, yeah. As you can see, the, the one that hits the enemy is the one that's doing the most uh, damage. All right, let's gather enemies. And boom, 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 boom. And shake that. Boom. 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 Now, because it's explosion, me gathering them with larva from Nidus, uh, making the weapon even look way stronger than using single target. It's, it's, uh, it's a range. And the thing is, this uh, effect is not affected by range, so you cannot actually extend that uh, range of uh, explosion. Uh, that's very, very sad. I hope the E one day uh, decide to fix that. All right. So that is that. Now, let's move to build number three, which is statistics using, for example, Korra. All right, let's go. And here we are. So now with Korra, we don't need the initial combo stacks to 100 because you're not going to be using the perk of the weapon as it's going to be uh, statistics. So it's not only Korra, actually. You can use it for, for example, um, let's say Baruch, but you want to keep the Incarnon, you, you want to keep the uh, initial combo. That's gonna be another video explaining all that. Don't worry, Gara, whatever, whatever, it's gonna be there, all right? Don't worry. Let's talk, talk about now Korra as a statistic, which is the main frame everyone using and relying on statistic mainly. So we're gonna switch this one on increase damage by 20, on shield break, increase damage by 80. We all know Korra getting a shield break, which doing. Uh, shield gating and now what we're gonna do we're gonna switch the initial combo to a range that's what we want to do yes, and then we're gonna go back to simulacrum and using Kora. let's go and here we are in simulacrum with Kora herself so this is the build we're gonna be using avenger and energizer 
Moving down to the ceramic dagger, we putting stick. Blood rush, sweeping wound, prime pressure point, organ shatter, gladiator mind, sacrifice steel, favor strike, and north wind. Pure damage, baby, and the power within. So, Naromon, of course, if you play Korra without Naromon, that's really bad. And this is the Archon shards, melee, melee, melee. And here, casting, casting, and easy as that. You can switch this to casting to melee, and you're gonna be more powerful. Don't mind the panic, alright? Let's uh, go. So, what we want to do is very, 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 very simple. Is we want to reach 12 combo uh, multipliers uh, with the... Uh, with the weapon so let's ensnare those uh, enemies to make the 12 multiplier easy uh, reached and then we activate the incarnate uh, form oh, i think i did a slam okay it's working, it's working let's reach the 12 multiplier all right and then let's gather enemies and check this out boom 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 now, running her with Eclipse will even boost further, but I'm most times going solo, so that's why I'm using Dispensary. Check this out. Now, you already know in Steel Pad how this will... How this is going to be, right? You know this already. Now you're saying, oh, oh my god, this is crazy. Yeah, I know. I know. I know, I know, I know. I know. Papa Hank gives you only the best, the best stuff. Now, let's talk about something else. Now, let's rewind to the very beginning where I used the touch or light or heavy or stick. Doesn't matter which build you use. Of course, you're going to follow the evolution as I showed you. Now, there is something. Let's go back to Nidus. Let's go back to Nidus and we go back to the steel uh, charge. Okay. So there is something you need to know. Let me bring back the fury. Oh my God. You see, you see, this is so much synergy. I don't like. Really, I don't like. I, you, I don't like. So choose one and stick to it, okay? So there is something called priming. Priming in Warframe is very simple. This game, the more you prime, the more condition overload will make damage for you. That's why we use Ogre Seeker for the steady duration and we use secondary encumber for more stats. So priming, what is priming, Hank? What is priming? Priming is putting layers of stats in that enemy to make him weaker and invulnerable for more damage. Yet, you're gonna boost your uh, melee weapon with condition overload, uh, melee damage per statue type affecting the target. So imagine how many statues that the enemy will have and that will affect your damage. So let's really quick get our internal form active. There we go. Let me shoot, shoot just away. So that's the projectile I was talking to you about. So let's prime those enemies. Boom, 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 boom. Getting them again. Boom, 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 boom. And then hitting them. And it's like you're gonna slice them in like two seconds, zero to 100 in zero seconds. That's what's priming. And that's the build for Epitaph that you will need to use. All right. So guys, I know this build has been kind of long. I totally understand, but there is no other way to explain this. And still, that's only Korra, but there is more to it where we're going to be the talking about. Because I tried this build with uh, using this weapon. I was doing some experiment with Baruch. Feels good. And as well as uh, Gara. Worth being a statistic. Of course, some people would say Magistar is way better when it comes to critical chance. I totally agree with you, but still this weapon have the perk of the 30% critical chance in the end, and yet the 100%. Same like Magistar, but depends on what ribbon you have for which uh, weapon. Now, big love to you all. I want to say thank you so much, guys, for supporting the channel. Big, 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 big love to you all. If you want to support the channel even further, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, let me know in the comments below what you think about the build, what you think about the weapon, uh, any silly uh, criticism gonna be thank you for watching big love and see you next time discord link is on the description top tier for frame